Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another Firearms Fact episode for you, and this is going to be tremendously helpful to some of you that have been having a hard time finding ammunition. Maybe you've been wanting to get into reloading, and you don't really know about the cost breakdown, or you know if it's worth doing or not, you know, all of those kind of things. So we're going to jump into some of those ideas and kind of give you an idea of the cost breakdown of factory ammunition versus reloading your own ammunition, and we'll talk about some of those things a bit. Uh, if you want to learn more about firearms technology and about reloading, definitely check out SDI. Uh, so Norton Desert Institute has some great programs. They accept GI Bill, uh, great higher education in the way of firearms technology. Check them out. Uh, great school. Okay, so let's break into this a little bit here. Um, so a lot of ammunition has been very difficult to get. Uh, I broke down some cost parameters here. Uh, nine millimeter traditionally has been relatively inexpensive, relatively available, and has become quickly with the advent of uh, pistol caliber carbines and so many companies making great nine millimeter, you know, handguns for self defense. Uh, it has quickly become one of the most prevalent handgun cartridges in the United States, mm -hmm. and with good reason. You know, it's cheap to shoot generally. Uh, light recoil, fast follow-up shots. I don't have to go into why 9mm is a great cartridge. But you're wondering, like, man, how in the heck am I going to come up with more 9? You know, I want to shoot more. Uh, so we're using 9mm as an example because it's traditionally a round that is very available with all of the stuff going on with being election year, with COVID, and of course now all the looting and the rioting. There's a lot of people that are turning to reloading as a potential uh, source of getting their ammunition versus trying to buy factory ammunition. So as a result, here we've got a box of normal range ammo. Uh, this represents uh, not the most expensive, but not the cheapest ball ammunition. I decided to pick sort of a middle of the line. I paid $15 for this box of ammunition for 50 rounds. That comes out to about 30 cents a round. Uh, but this ammunition may not always be available. So the idea is that we're gonna break down the cost a little bit uh, and we can really figure that out pretty quickly here. And we, we've got some figures here, Chad. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big things with reloading is not only um, saving money on your ammunition cost in the long run. There are initial costs up front that we're gonna discuss, mm -hmm. but also it, it's kind of a time suck. So if you have more time, then you can definitely reload your own ammo because it does take a considerable amount of time to set things up, uh, change dies, change settings, things like that, mm -hmm. to get yourself ready to go. And it depends on what type of press you use as well. Like right. progressives are more expensive, they run ammunition faster, you can load more in a shorter amount of time. A single stage press is a lot cheaper, but it will take you more time. So you have to weigh all those costs as well. It certainly comes down to a matter of time expenditure, what your time is worth to you. Uh, as well as how much time you're willing to invest mm -hmm. in producing the ammunition that we're going to talk about. And those are just outliers too. You know, not, they are. Uh, you know, if, if ammo was available, those would be considerations as well. Of course, so. but now we're, we're, we're speaking of ammo being you know, very, very slim to come by. Mm -hmm. So we decided in this particular video for my breakdown here to go with uh, Lee Precision as most of our, our brand uh, of, of equipment here is going to be lead precision just to keep the cost reasonable. Mm -hmm. And instead of going with an entry level single stage press, I opted for a turret press uh, so you can make your ammo a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, the three hole turret press was my first, uh, you know, progressive type of press. And uh, I loaded thousands of rounds mm -hmm. on that press and it's a great piece of gear. Yep. So I priced it out on the, on the basic lead turret press that comes with your scale, your powder measure, the press, uh, pretty much everything you need to get started except a set of dies. That's $216, okay? A set of reloading dies from Lee Precision, a carbide 9mm set's about 30 bucks. Now, if you decide to go with a cast bullet and doing the casting yourself, or whether you decide to go with a jacketed bullet, like a pre-purchased bullet, uh, that's gonna really weigh into how much the ammunition costs. If you go with something like a Lee Precision uh, gang mold like this, uh, you can produce your own uh, cast, okay? Uh, casting pot is going to set you back 60 or 80 bucks from Lee Precision. And then a gang mold, these with handles are about 60 bucks a piece, okay? So the idea of a gang mold is that you're throwing a heck of a lot of projectiles in one casting. So you can really uh, whip out a whole bunch of stuff. Now this is a buckshot mold. Uh, this one just happened to have handles. And this is my 9mm gang mold that does not have handles on it, but I've, I've cast... You can throw six nine millimeters in one uh, one pour, 
which is really handy. You can really put out a lot of projectiles with a mold like this. So if you decide to cast, let's break that, uh, that cost down a little bit. Um, all right, so you're looking at uh, around 13 cents a round to load cast on the top end versus 30 cents a round to buy factory ammunition. So what that comes down to, you're saving about $8.50 a box uh, when you're reloading versus buying. So um, you can produce it for anywhere from $5 to $6.50 a box for cast ammunition for 50 rounds. Uh, if you are willing to put in the work casting yourself. Now casting does represent you know, an amount of equipment costs that you have to add as well as the overall time expenditure to cast, size, everything like that. You'll have to have a projectile sizing die from Lee, a push die. Uh, those are about 30 bucks a piece as well. So we figured that if you decide to cast and you end up saving, let's just say $8.50 per box of ammunition, all right, how many rounds do you have to load to pay off your equipment? <laughs> to get to get over your initial equipment on the reloading aspect, you're going to have to make uh, 1,775 rounds of cast 9mm ammo to make up the entry cost of the equipment. Once you pass that threshold, you've now overcome the cost of the equipment. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to what kind of volume are you shooting? Is it going to are you shooting that, that kind of volume to where you need to load that much mm -hmm. ammo? Let's just say you shoot 250 rounds a weekend or something like that you're going to realize this amount of ammo in a couple of months. A couple of months later, the equipment's paid for it. From then on, you're saving $8.50 a box. Mm. So that gets your training cost down. If you're shooting 250 rounds a week and you're willing to use cast, you can get your training cost down to $20 a session if you play your cards right. Now, question for you. In this... Um in, in these calculations here, did you use a uh, new brass or like once fired, like range pickup? Range pickup brass. Okay, okay so that's, that's a big cost is the brass. So with 9mm, most people are just going to pick up range brass. If you buy new produced brass, that is certainly a cost to consider. Uh, you don't have to use new brass. Um, you can just tumble this stuff, get it clean, and you can use one's fire brass. Mm -hmm. It is not a big deal. The brass is not quite as crucial of a component. Uh, cast ammo is generally going to be a little smokier. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to burn a little bit dirtier, but it is very inexpensive. All right, so you're probably wondering, all right, what about jacketed bullets that I just buy and just forego the whole casting uh, aspect of it? All right, so to load um, the bulk uh, plated berries projectiles, we're probably looking at costing us, yeah, those are mm -hmm. costing 17 cents a round to make. That's for a completed round of ammunition. That's for a completed round of ammunition, correct. Good deal. So you're you're loading roughly about twice is about the, the 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 figure that you're looking at. If you load if you cast, you're gonna get about maybe 65% more ammo uh, for your money. If you're loading uh, jacketed, like just buying the bulk berries like these, uh, you're gonna shoot about twice as much mm -hmm. for the money. So definitely something to consider. Now, pistol ammo is kind of an outlier. Uh, Chad is here. You're probably wondering, like, what's Chad going to say? Well, Chad's does a lot of, re of rifle reloading as well, so he's going to share some information about um, some of the match-grade rifle ammo that he's been loading the heck out of for a lot of competition and for video use for us. Mm. I just want to add one more thing on the 9mm front. This is where you really save the money. You're really saving money on defensive bullets, okay? Absolutely. So your average law enforcement size 50-round box of, like, you know, here's some uh, Hornady Critical Duty ammunition, all right? $37 a box for 50 rounds. So you're getting into some extreme cost. I mean, that that's that's not a cheap bullet, okay? Now this isn't even the this isn't even um the most expensive loads. Like some of the 20 and 25 round boxes can be 20 or 25 dollars, like right. upwards of a dollar per round. It can get up to a dollar a shot, okay? So in this case, I've got some Hornady XTPs, which is a great projectile. This is a wonderful projectile, and I paid twenty-one dollars for a hundred of them. All right, so the powder, the primer, and the, and the brass, if you're reusing it, that's, that's a cheap cost. The bullet is what costs so much money. So if I had to buy 100 of these for 80 or 90 bucks, gosh, I mean, buying the loaded ammo, you're spending a boatload of money. But in this particular case, I'm only going to have, like, maybe at most, I think, what, what did we come up with for doing uh, right the Hornady's? XTP, right there. 
28 cents a round is what we're loading so for. So you're getting into the same cost as the normal range ammo. Yes. Yep. So now you're getting into a $15 box of defensive ammo versus a $40 box of defensive ammo. So you are getting really far down the rabbit hole in terms of saving money mm -hmm. when you're talking defensive bullets. Where you really start saving money in the handgun realm is when you start reloading Magnum. Uh, cartridges oh, gosh, like 357, yeah. 44 especially. It's nothing to go and find like a 50 round box of 44 mag ammo and it costs $59. Yeah, I mean it costs you know twice as much as what your like 9mm 45 defensive ammo costs for your standard centerfire guns. Well that's what but, got me into 44 mag. That's what got me into reloading was 44 mag. Oh ammo. man. I we, couldn't afford to shoot it. No, heck no. When we started reloading, I mean we cut our teeth on Lee equipment, you know, yeah. and you know, we were just trying to save money and we were shooting Magnums, you know, like 686s and 629s and things like that. And you can get the cost down on reloading Magnum cartridges down to pennies, 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 especially if you cast. I it, mean, especially and, if you cast and especially if you buy your powder and bolt. Oh, yeah. But um, now with like the, the sourcing of lead, there are two ways to go about that. I mean, nowadays it's a little bit harder to find wheel weights because they've switched to steel uh, weights in most of the tire shops, but you still can find the old lead weights laying around. Um, you can source those for either pretty cheap or free sometimes. People just want to get rid of them. And then it's just a little bit of time and effort to smelt them down. We've done that before, smelting wheel waste down, mm -hmm. blazing the top of it off, and then pouring molds. We would pour uh, corn cob molds in the corn bread pans, you know. Or you can purchase uh, was it the going right now about three to three fifty a pound. For yeah, lead? you're looking at about three dollars and fifty cents uh, a pound for lead. Uh, I buy all of my certified uh, casting alloys through Rota Metals. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, they're the people that I use, and they actually provide what they call certified bullet casting alloy. They offer hardball, they offer number two, they offer linotype, they offer pure lead, and all. And one thing you need to understand about casting, and, and I don't want this to go too far outside the realm of this video, but you want to make sure you're using a hard alloy for a high-speed rifle bullet, uh, and you got to make sure it's sized properly. It's got to be like a thou or so over bore diameter, or you'll get gas cutting and you'll get leading. Mm -hmm. And the revolvers will lead really bad too. That's why when you're running a 44 Magnum or something, you're generally going to have your mold is going to have a gas check shank on it, and you want to gas check those projectiles and make sure they're sized properly. Mm -hmm. And you'll get great accuracy, lots of power. Nothing hits harder than 44 Mag line of type bullets running on butt naked charge of powder getting out of a good long barrel on like mm -hmm. a 29dx or something you're talking a, a magical combination of power and uh man there's 44 mag revolver is one outstanding setup and also for your lever action some of you like the henry 44 mag lever action mm -hmm. um you know you can get some great velocity out of the longer barrel on the on the henry oh yeah and with casting you can shoot your henry for pennies on the dollar if you just take the little bit of effort to source the right lead. You know, you want to make sure you use a good hard alloy. I would run hardball uh, for your 44 mag projectiles, um, but you can run linotype too. Okay. Linotype is an extremely Brunel hardness alloy that uh, if properly uh, heat treated can rival jacketed uh, hardness. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason I'm kind of hanging out is because, you know, I do load a lot of match ammunition in. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we considered uh, just discussing this video was okay well there's a shortage of nine millimeter ammo okay people are buying it in droves okay the manufacturers can't produce it fast enough well mm -hmm. once you once retailers sell out of all the full metal jacket and range stuff well what do people move to whatever's available which is your defensive stuff okay the same mm -hmm. thing goes on in rifle cartridges as well if uh, people need 556 or 308 and all the ball ammunition is gone well they move up to the match stuff or the hunting stuff once all that's gone then I mean you're out so if you're trying to say you're a competitor and you need you know thousands of rounds a year I mean you're and you're not reloading well you may have to start reloading and where you can really save a lot of money on rifle reloading it's just like with the pistol round you know when you're reloading like the higher end stuff you can save a ton of money mm -hmm. once you get past the initial cost um, just for example like 308 I use a lot of brass and it's usually about 80 cents to a dollar per you know cartridge okay per case when you buy it initially well i tack on that initial cost like right out of the gate so my my initial loads are about a dollar 40 a piece okay which is right in line with regular like gold metal match and other ammunition but it's fine tuned to my rifle well once i get past that first firing i consider the brass free 
I don't divide the cost up. So I'll just take the brass out. I was like, all right, I already shot it, so it's free now. So then I'm loading match grade ammunition after that for 40 cents to 50 cents a shot, which is and exceptional. And now ball ammo in many cases costs more than that. It does, 60 so cents. So you're actually so. loading match ammo for roughly the cost of ball mm -hmm. ammo. And another important thing is if you're running a bolt gun, you can actually fire form your brass. And if you use the same brass and the same gun mm -hmm. consistently and keep it segregated, you can actually get a Lee call it neck sizing die mm -hmm. and you can just size the neck. And man, those cases will last pretty good amount of time. You still have to set the shoulders back occasionally, so they would have to be run through a full-length sizing die. I choose to run mine through a full-length sizer anyway. For anyways, reliability. For reliability. Yeah. But I've found, like, in my bolt actions, I've gotten 15 firing so far in my 308 on my first lot. And, like, when it comes to auto loaders, just for example, like my 6AR, okay, that is a Wildcat, so I can only hand load for it. There is no commercially available ammunition out there for that cartridge. Right. Now, you guys have may, may have seen the 6 ARC Okay, the six millimeter arc that Hornady released. Well, that cartridge, the shoulder is set back kind of right in between where the Grendel case is and where a PPC is. For those of you who are interested and know what I'm talking about, it's not the same. Okay, so it's still not commercially available for my stuff. You'll see the, the video coming soon. Probably. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to get into that <laughs> rabbit hole. But, um, you know, that round cost me about $1.50 initially because I use Burger projectiles, which are a higher end projectile, they're more expensive. Um, but they're once flat I, base or boat tail? They're a, they're a boat tail. They're a boat tail 90 grain, you know, ballistic, or not ballistic tip, but a uh, boat tail hollow point. Did you load those game changers I sent you? I did. But I shot, they, uh, good? they shot good. I shot the game changers in a match and I shot the, the last match I shot, I used the, the burgers and they did a little bit better because I could get my velocity up there a little bit more and they, they worked better in my, uh, my barrel because of the, the lead and everything. So, um, I think those but, burger jackets have a softer consistency i think you get maybe. higher velocities maybe but um regardless you know i'm i'm loading that round initially for a dollar fifty and then after that i'm loading it for about 50 cents okay and i get 10 firings out of my brass so the first lot of 300 pieces that i use for various matches and testing and stuff i've gotten 10 firings out of it and i started to get just a little bit of like uh, case head separation, you know, kind of starting to occur. So I decided to retire it. I'd probably be safe without any risk of, you know, case head separation or any sort of uh, brass issue at maybe eight or nine firings. But that is a lot of repeated firings out of a semi-automatic platform. Man, I'm going to so, tell you right now, that is an obscene amount of, of firings for one case. Especially and for I'm going to tell you, there is, there is no worse feeling than that. Stuck that case. horrible, <laughs> that horrible little moment where you realize that your brass is, has uh, been on down the trail mm. for the last time, and you got to let them on. You got to let them go to the brass heap in the sky, and you got to go on over and put old Yeller down in the garbage can or in the recycle bin. And you just gotta, you gotta, you can just hear taps playing as you just pour them into the into the scrap bin. Those poor little brass just gave their all. Well, knowing that they'll be recycled and drawn into new brass makes my heart kind of happy. They'll get they'll get made into some uh, trinket at a uh, at Hobby Lobby, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, but like, all right, so moving kind of back towards the the standard realm, all right, five five six. So a lot of times when you find like surplus five five six, it could be thirty to forty cents a shot for like M eight five five. Okay, quality M eight five five might be say three hundred and fifty dollars for a thousand rounds. So thirty-five cents, a, yeah, thirty-five cents a <laughs> shot. Okay, on a normal in a normal market. Okay, um, just kind of on average. Uh, some of it could be a little cheaper. Some of it could be a little bit more expensive. But if you reloaded M855, which I've done in the past uh, to kind of stock up on it just for doing videos and stuff, you can get those costs down to about fifteen to twenty cents. You know, and especially like you can buy brand new M855 projectiles. Well, the SS109 projectiles yeah. um, from suppliers like Wideners and, and others. But um, the, the cost can definitely be reduced by oh, yeah. reloading. But it's just a matter of factoring in time, effort, and then the original equipment, getting your money back on the equipment. And the more you reload, like pistol, rifle, shotgun even, we're not going to dive into that rabbit hole in this yeah. video. But, you know, all those costs, eventually, they, they come to a head, and you, you get over that hump, and then you start really saving money, especially if you've got the time for it. 
But yeah, when it comes to loading uh, shotgun shells, I'll just quickly add this. Um, oh boy. You can actually, you can save a ton of money loading your own buckshot and stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. Bird loads, I mean, you have to be shooting a heck of a lot of bird loads. I mean, to justify the expense, I mean, you can certainly save money, of mm -hmm. course, just like anything else, but I find that it's actually uh, pretty reasonable to just buy the bird loads. And then the specialty stuff, buckshot, slugs, especially because that stuff's so hard to mm -hmm. get right now. Uh, it, it makes more sense to load that. That's now you're not going to be reloading a you know Berniki Black Magic or anything like that, or well, a you, deer slug. You you will if you buy a uh, slug mold and throw and, it with Linotype. Ooh, a paint. good Linotype slug. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder what they coat those Kent slugs with. Maybe some uh, caliper paint. Ooh, they look like they might be some form of a uh, powder, like powder coating. Ooh, yeah. So ooh. um, we wanted to really kind of you know touch on this a bit. Uh, I know Widener's is a great source for bolt projectiles. Mm -hmm. One little little tiny hint I'll give you on that. If you are sourcing bolt projectiles in the SS-109s, uh, try to get the unpainted ones. Well, yeah, unpainted because they're new. Yes, unpainted is definitely the way to go. The air-pulled ones, they'll shoot. Um, I wouldn't expect a ton of accuracy, and in my experience, the unpainted SS-109s shoot better. Uh, the Lithuanian surplus stuff that we have, the Triple G, it's unpainted 109s. Mm -hmm great projectiles they shoot so good yep. and that ammo is really really solid stuff okay uh we get a lot of stuff through sinclair mm -hmm. i get a lot of stuff through brownells yep. brownells has a lot of great gunsmithing stuff as well uh in addition to reloading and then sinclair is kind of the reloading component of brownells so those companies are one and the same mm -hmm. you can get powder and primers and reloading components on brownells as well um but yeah all those are great sources um guys the thing is don't panic. Uh, I know that a lot of folks are wondering, hey, where am I going to get my ammo? And I know it's a, it's a difficult time to you know buy factory ammo right now. We wanted this cost breakdown to give you guys a little bit of a realistic term as terms of what, it, what kind of money you actually save. Uh, you can do this cost breakdown really easy yourself. All you got to do is just figure out... Uh, I'll, I'll just quickly mention how I came up with the price. Uh, there's 7,000 grains of powder in a pound of powder. Uh, so you divide by the powder charge. So let's say I, I factored in about a four and a half grain powder charge, and then I divided four and a half into into seven thousand to determine how many rounds I get out of a pound of powder. And then of course I can determine determine how much how much uh, this pound of powder costs, and then how much I've got in each round. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's how you figure that out. Same thing with your primers. If mm -hmm. you've got a sleeve of primers that's five dollars, well then that's five cents. Mm -hmm. Right. The more you buy, the, the cheaper they are. The more you buy, the cheaper they are. And then the same can go for projectiles. And of course, for uh, lead, the lead projectiles and the mm -hmm. casting, the way I figured out my round cost, 7,000 grains in a pound. Of course, uh, we divide by the amount of grains in the bullet that we're casting. That gives you, you know, and if you know that your, your pound of lead is $3.50, then you can quickly, easily extrapolate mm -hmm. uh, the cost of the ammo. That breakdown can be determined for anything that you wish to load. Um, and honestly, there's a lot of specialty rounds out there. Um, and let's just say a, a wild, not, either a wildcat cartridge like Chad 6mm AR, or uh, even a common cartridge that just doesn't have a lot of ammo availability widespread across many retail establishments. Uh, an example might be 6.5x55 Swedish, or 7.5x55 uh, Swiss or something like that, like some of the oddball uh, stuff, 9.3x57, 9.3x62, you name it. You know, kind of more of the obscure stuff. Uh, yeah, those rounds can easily get upwards of 2 to $2.50 a shot. If not more. If not more, whereas if you are able to source some brass, or if you have some once fired brass from your hunting rifle, you can actually load those cartridges for no more than any other cartridge. Mm -hmm. It's just the brass and the dies are unique to that cartridge, but there's a lot of oddball guns out there. You'd be surprised you can shoot and all you need is the components. And really once you get over the initial cost, it's not that much more expensive to shoot the weird stuff mm -hmm. as it is the common stuff. Well, and that's what, that's what really, what's the, what am I trying to say here? That's what <laughs> separates men from the boys. <laughs> oh, it separates my brain from my mouth right now. So that's where reloading really shines is when you can, you know, save money on all of your common stuff, but also be able to shoot your crazy stuff because you don't want to pay three or four dollars a shot, you know? So being able to, you know, especially like bringing old guns back to life, like sometimes reloading is the only 
option. Oh, yeah. Um, but, like, if you guys don't know about reloading, we have several videos on the topic. There are some great resources out there for instruction reloading. One of the best resources is a load manual. Buy yourself a reloading manual and read the entire preface, and you will know pretty much everything you need to go to get started. Find a friend who's got a reloading setup. Go and, you know, have them teach you how to load ammunition, yeah. you know, and get some hands-on uh, with it. And, you know, don't discount the used market either. When it comes to um, like use reloading equipment and such, you can find some great deals on things out there like the presses and such, and save a ton of money mm -hmm. and uh, and get you know package deals that otherwise would not be available you know for a lot less than you would spend retail on. So. I would uh, I would pick up whatever the most recent volume of the Richard Lee's Modern Reloading Manual is. It's one of the cheapest reloading manuals you can get, and mm -hmm. dare I say, one of the most informative. Absolutely, uh, Richard Lee goes into a lot of detail. The manual is like 20 bucks. Go buy it, sit down, <laughs> read it, and you'll know, you'll have a really good idea uh, of before you even pick up a reloading press, you'll know exactly what you're dealing with. And yep. it's a great volume, and I believe it, it belongs in every single uh, collection of manuals. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We hope you learned something. Uh, the, the, the goal here is to help people that are having difficulty locating ammunition and to break down the cost of factory versus... Uh, hand-loaded ammunition. Hopefully this pointed you guys in the right direction. Uh, to be a well-rounded gun owner, you have to be able to be responsible for your own food, for your own, for your guns, right? You have and, to be self-reliant. You must be self-reliant, yep. and this is a very crucial aspect of that. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely want to thank all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. Thank you for seeing value in what we do. All the folks who purchase man cans over on the website, we've got some great boxes for you guys that we hand-selected. We know you guys are going to love it. So thank you guys for helping us out there. Also, we've got some great t-shirts over on Ballistic Inc. Go check out our shop. Pick up a shirt. You can help out your favorite content creators in the process. Really cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, stay tuned. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. See you guys later.